Hey everybody, JC here with a new episode of Ian and I's Pop Talk, where we talk about the latest happenings in the world of pop culture. And to start this episode off, I just wanted to touch on a few things we had discussed in the last episode, um, specifically in regards to Hasbro's upcoming Star Wars AT-AT and Vintage Collection figures. Um, now with the AT-AT, or as it's nicknamed, the Bad-AT, uh, we have confirmation from Hasbro that it is coming. It's going to retail for about $99.99 um, and due out by um, August 1st of this year. It's said to hold up to 20 figures in the cargo hold area um, and 6 figures in the cockpit. It's going to come with a pop-out speeder bike and an AT-AT driver. Um, and then also have features like the, the panel that Luke can cut out with his lightsaber to throw the bomb in and such. Uh, with the Vintage Collection, we also have confirmation of it. It is going to be more of a mainstream line. Um, they're going to do away with the clamshells. Um, they are going to keep the, the vintage looking card backs, uh, the throwback to the Kenner card backs. Um, the retail price or suggested retail price for these is going to be $7.99. Um, after that initial Empire Strikes Back wave that we had talked about with Hoth Leia, um, Dengar, Bespin Luke, and um, General Veers uh, will we'll start seeing figures from both the original trilogy and, uh, um, and the prequel trilogy. Um, so that does it with that. Um, and then with the main focus of this week's episode, I thought we would talk about the nominations for the 82nd Academy Awards, which I'm sure you've read or seen on TV that they were announced uh, earlier this week. And leading the way uh, with nine nominations is James Cameron's sci-fi epic Avatar. Now, Avatar tied with another movie called The Hurt Locker, which is uh, a war-type movie uh, dealing with uh, two soldiers in Iraq. I haven't seen The Hurt Locker, so I, I can't speak upon that one too much. Um, but with Avatar, you know, one of the things it was nominated for with its nine nominations is Best Picture. And though I, I kind of have mixed feelings about this, because on the one hand, I, I'm really happy to see the Academy start to acknowledge uh, the genre of sci-fi more and give it more respect. But on the other hand, for for something like Best Picture, to me that means it's got to have the best story, the best acting, the best, you know, basically all around package. And, you know, obviously no doubt the Avatar, you know, with the special effects and everything should nail all those categories without a problem. But when it comes to like the story, you know, and not to say that the story was bad, but I don't think it was particularly great either. I mean, it was pretty much an average story that's been done and to some degree, you know, many times before. So, you know, I, I just, and the acting, I mean, again, not bad, but certainly not anything spectacular. So, you know, I obviously, I understand the buzz around Avatar, you know, it's, it's made tons of money, it broke, um, uh, another record this week, um, the the domestic box office take. Um, it had already broken the worldwide box office take, which is the domestic and combining domestic and foreign box office takes, and then the individual foreign box office take. It had also already broken. So I mean, the thing is definitely a money maker, but I think people are primarily going to see it because they want to see these you know much talked about special 3D effects. And, you know, and like I said, the movie overall is an enjoyable movie. I, I certainly walked out of the movie enjoying the movie. But I didn't walk out thinking, man, this story was just stellar. The story was as good as the special effects. You know, no. You know, and if it didn't have these special effects and everything, I don't think we'd be sitting here talking about it as an o Oscar, you know, contender. So I, I'm a little, you know, like I said, divided on, on that. Um, you know, and I'd be interested to hear what you all feel. You know, leave a comment in the video section, or if you're reading this or listening to this on, on uh, E and I. You know, we have a comment section that you can go down and scroll down and, and comment as well. So let us know what you think, and if you think it deserves uh, winning uh, Best Picture. For other movies uh, worth mentioning, uh, getting some Oscar nods this year is Star Trek, which walked away with four nominations including for makeup and best visual effects. 
Now, I'd make the argument that if you're going to give a best picture to a sci-fi movie this year, that it would be Star Trek. You know, Star Trek really had a good story, and in my opinion, was the best movie of 2009. Um, and it's certainly not easy taking something that's so well established and, and entrenched in so many people's minds like Star Trek is and revamp it and relaunch it so both fans of old and new people can come in and enjoy the movie, which I think they were very successful in doing. And, you know, even though it didn't have 3D effects, I thought the effects of the movie were fantastic too. So, you know, I would make the argument that Star Trek is as deserving, if not more so, than Avatar. Um, uh, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, which was another big uh, summer movie that took in a lot at the box office as far as revenue, it only came away with one uh, nomination, uh, which was for sound mixing. So, not terribly impressive there. Of course, a lot of fans, and myself included, um, I, I didn't hate the movie, but I certainly didn't think it was as good as the first movie, and a lot of fans that I've heard and talked to, you know, really didn't like the movie at all. Uh, which is probably why both it and G.I.G. Rise of Cobra were nominated this year for Razzies, uh, which is basically the opposite of an Academy Award. Um, they were both nominated for Worst Picture of 2009. Now, as I said, I wouldn't go as far as to say that they were the worst pictures. Um, you know, I, I thought they were okay movies, but, um, but they did both get that Razzie nod. Um, also getting the Razzie for work, nomination for Worst Pictures, All About Steve and Land of the Lost and Old Dogs. I haven't seen Old Dogs. Land of the Lost definitely, I think, is deserving of the Worst Picture, and All About Steve could easily be a good contender for that as well. But, you know, again, I'd be interested to hear what you think if, if Transformers is deserving of Worst Picture of the Year or, or G.I. Joe. Uh, let us know. And that about does it. Um, we wanted to finish things off with a reader question. And if you have a reader question you'd like to have read uh, with an answer in, in a future episode, please send those in to poptalk at enewseye.com. And for this week, we have a question from uh, Jeff Wilson who asks, Is it true Playmates has canceled their Star Trek line? Well, Jeff, the answer is technically no. They haven't canceled the line. What they've done, or what they've said they've done, is put it on hiatus for 2010, meaning we're not going to see any new Star Trek products from them this coming year. Now, that doesn't mean that in the future, 2011 or 2012, we won't see new Star Trek products from them. And in fact, because there is a definitely a new Star Trek movie in the works, which I believe is due out on July 4th of 2012, we'll obviously probably see some type of movie product tie-in um, around that time. And assuming Playmates holds on to the license till then, um, which, you know, if they're not going to put any product out for a year or year and a half, uh, you know, that's got to be an expensive license for them to hold. I mean, I don't know if they have an option to give it up or, or what, but, you know, at this time, though, they are the license holder for Star Trek, and so, and it's not canceled, but nothing for 2010. Um, they also, just to throw it in, they also said the same thing about their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line, which is also on hiatus for 2010. But beyond that, that we don't know what they plan to do with those lines. All right, well, that about does it for this episode. Um, we just wanted to leave you with a little video. Um, you're probably aware of those, especially if you're living on the east coast of the United States. Uh, we're experiencing a little bit of a blizzard this uh, this weekend. Um, here, just outside of Washington D.C., we're almost up to two feet of snow, which is pretty. Uh, pretty a lot of snow for, for this area. Um, so we shot a little bit of video of that to end this uh, episode with. You know, not really pop culture related, but cool nonetheless. So check it out, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, JC here. And what you're looking at is not the planet Hoth. It's not even the Antarctic. Or even Sarah Palin's Alaska. This is just right outside the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. And you're getting a look at the blizzard of 2010.